Welcome back. Now you have a patient who has chest tube and you're going to run on him now. What are the things you should look for in this patient? First of all, even before you run on the patient, check position on chest x-ray. If there was a chest x-ray done for that day, and I recommend to be honest with you, daily chest x-rays for those with chest tubes. That way you look for the position every day and you look for whether pneumothorax or the fluids, all of that. So that's the first thing. Make sure it's in good position, the chest x-ray, and I'll show you a few examples in a little bit. Second of all, you should check chest, the tubes or the circuit integrity. What I mean by this, make sure the tubes are not detached, are connected, <clears throat> are intact with no problem. And this inspection process should start from the insertion site where you will see the gauze all the way down to the chest tube uh, unit, drainage unit. And again, do this with the help of the nurse. Sometimes we can just ask nurses because that's part of their assessment and they do, do it, uh, they will just tell us if everything is okay. But it's very important, at least you know how to do it. So part of our daily assessment is making sure the tubes, the circuit is connected, not detached. The third thing, we need to check the output, whether blood or fluid, we need to know how much the patient has put in the last 24 hours because that's one of the criteria we decide based on that if the patient still needs chest tube or not and here we're looking the daily not the total that's what it matter to me and usually the nurse will tell you and you see these marks on the chest tube unit they will put marks there to know exactly how much on daily basis the third thing is check for air leak where you will see the bubbles and the water seal uh, chambers that means there's air still coming into that water seal and I'll talk about that in the next video how to uh, kind of troubleshoot air leak and the one more thing make sure Pain, pain control. Patient con pain is adequately controlled. Very important because having that chest tube hurts the chest and can affect their ability to take deep breath. Okay, so this is a chest x-ray for a patient that we had. I just want to show you, as you see here, I don't know if you will see it, but let me change the color. There is a large pneumothorax in this area, as you see in this area, with lung compression, right? So, and as you see, this is the ET tube, and this is the tip, this is the carina here, and it's good position. This is the NG tube, and it's going all the way here, so it's in good position. And you see bilateral diffuse infiltrate in the lungs. So what we did then we placed an a chest tube. Just kind of zoom. As you see here, this is the chest tube coming from outside and sitting in the left upper lobe right here this is the tip and as you see the pneumothorax has resolved and the lung has expanded because this chest tube kind of sucked all the air out so as we said evacuated the air out restore the normal pulmonary physiology restore the intrapleural pressure negative intrapleural pressure and let the lung expand to its normal position also the ET tube we just talked about the NG tube still in good position actually it looks like post pylorus position which means the risk of aspiration even less and there is a new catheter here now we see it 
and this looks like a dialysis catheter because it's a large bore catheter and looks in good position what do we have let's see we have this as you see here this is seems a large bore catheter or drain this is a plural drain like a pigtail a catheter or drain rather than the regular chest tube but again we can call it chest tube because it's the same principle and it looks to me uh, this was inserted uh, again for whether pleural fusion pneumothorax although I see some pneumothorax here again why the pneumothorax has not resolved in this we're not here to discuss that just to show you examples the ET tube is right here the Quran is right here the the uh, NG tube is coming right here it's below the diaphragm and there is like a, a permacath or a per um, um, portacath or permacath you can tell it's this is underneath the skin although I feel it's way kind of too deep um, it should be a little bit upright here and these are difficult really to reposition because they tunneled uh, that's what I wanted to say tunneled catheter because they are tunneled under the skin uh, let me see if I have more I think I have one more okay I have this let me just bring this down uh, this is okay you can see a chest tube right is coming right here and you see there is as if there is a gap here that sometimes you see in chest tube these are the fenestrations or hole in the chest tubes if you want to the only thing you need to know about the holes and those who perform chest tubes they know that they should be inside the chest they should not be outside the chest if they are outside the chest they will cause the air leak and it cause problems they should be inside the chest so this is a good chest tube as you see chest tubes they are kind of thin compared to the regular plu uh, pleural drains or pigtail catheters sometimes look uh, thicker I think those are the x-rays that I have but that just to help you uh, see this chest tube now you will have some patients with multiple chest tubes on the same side or different size sometimes mediastinal chest tubes sometimes pericardial drain and you will see these chest tubes going to the mediastinum or going to the pericardium but that's part of your daily round is to check make sure the chest tubes are not malpositioned and very importantly are not malpositioned into the lung parenchyma causing injury there hopefully this was useful Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released. Glad to have you on board.